I've seen you collected your first data crop. <laughs> Fascinating things. <gasps> the perfection of the dark arts of mobile gaming. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna have our first look at the data cron update. It's here, and there's gonna be a lot of important resource that we're gonna be sharing in this video today to get us started. And I took a little glance at a variety of things in the game. I'm feeling better about data crons and the ability that they're not gonna be exclusive just the packs. And you should be able to get these in a variety of different ways. It's funny, we couldn't get a fleet loadout tab, but don't you worry, we got a brand new Datacron loadout tab. And this is what makes me feel a little bit better about the whole thing, because here, as I said, I've, I've been kind of like examining myself, like how do I wanna approach Datacrons? I wanna be able to make videos for you guys and help you kind of navigate What's gonna be the best data ground per season, yada, yada, yada. But I don't wanna buy packs. I don't wanna spend money for packs on data crons just for it to go away in three months. Seeing this shipment makes me feel a lot better. I can't quite understand it fully right now because we haven't fully embraced it, but you can buy things with crystals, of course. And on top of that, there's also ways using shard shop currency, which is appealing to me because, well, I got quite a lot of uh, shard shop currency built up. I have 300, 400 some thousand, okay. Problem is, for a lot of you guys out there, 4,000 is a lot because you're using it for gear. Like, for example, my free-to-play guy. I rely on the shard shops. Uh, ally points, okay. Kind of expensive, but as we're saying, you can actually buy the actual data crons of the season in here, so cool. All right, if you don't have crystals, you don't have shard shop currency, maybe you have millions of ally points. You might be wanting to open up bronzy packs for gear, but you can also use the ally points for this. Be sure to check your inbox because we have a lot of free, and not a lot of free resources, but I did say during my stream yesterday, you know what, CG should be giving out free stuff to get us started on this. So CG, you're welcome for the pro tip. Maybe do this kind of stuff more often, just saying. And before we start embracing this and testing this out for the first time, I just want to say, uh, none of you guys are going to be as good as Ice Age Fighter. He got the perfect roll. 69, 69% health stun. <laughs> you guys might as well quit the game. Conquest just started, and at the end of every sector, I believe, you have this optional bonus battle at the very end that you can repeatedly do over and over and over again. And it looks like the, you get two crates, I'm guessing, here. Uh, one's going to have uh, some data crons, and the other's going to have the data cache or the credits that you're going to need to unlock and upgrade through the variety of tiers. And then you have a second crate, which has the variety of slicing materials. But again, I think this is going to be more for people that finish Conquest early. One of the bonuses are going to be, you can use all that remaining energy. Because normally, I would just clock out. The second I finish Conquest, usually I finish, I don't know. I don't buy the Conquest Pass Plus. I refuse to buy it. So usually, I finish about three, four to two days early. Those last days, instead of just calling it quits, I got to get in and I got to farm whatever's on these nodes and these sectors here. So probably the best way to describe it is this is kind of like your cantina battle that you normally farm relic materials. Well, Conquest is kind of a new version of cantina where you only have a limited time to farm these things on these individual nodes here. And then, of course, aside from that, we have the Conquest crate, which also is going to have it looks like it's going to give you a data cron. It's going to give you some slice materials. But again, if you're not engaging with this at 4 million GP to participate in hard mode, and although you can still have these optional bonus battles at the very end of these sectors in normal mode, you're not going to get as much stuff. That's part number one. You're just not going to get as many resources compared to the hard mode crate that you see over here. Yeah, you're going to get some of the lower level stuff that's on par, but as you see, maxed out crates, pretty significant difference with the higher levels of the mark three is needed for the higher rolls and also not nearly as much of the re-roll currency here we're given a couple of data caches so i guess that's like the currency the credits if you will and then the variety of slicing materials the acumen mark one we also have the acumen mark two and let's see this is the actual data cron set the treaties inquisitorious and here's what the summary so i, I people get freaked out at first thinking oh my gosh it's just an inquisitorious data cron set which would have been really annoying but it's just, I think, the name of the season or the name of the set that we have going on. Because as you see, you can roll for the Inquisitor bonuses, the Galactic Republic bonus, and the Resistance bonuses. So depending on what your roster has or what data crown you want to build, you're going to want to roll for the right stat. And that's where all these resources come hand in hand. So let's go ahead, pick up these resources. And I don't know, I guess let's see what our first roll is going to look like here. Ah, here we go. Data crowns are powerful objects that you assign to your squads in Grand Arena and Territory Wars. You can see your collection in the data crowns tab of your inventory. However, due to this power, data crowns only last for so long. Once they reach their expiration, they are automatically dismantled. <gasps> the 
perfection of the dark arts of mobile gaming. Then still, I digress. Data crimes are an effective way of improving an entire squad with bonus stats and bonus mechanics. Let's look at the one you found. All right, let's take a look. Show me, buddy. What do we got here? Oh, I see it's unactivated, yo. Upgrading data crimes to higher levels requires specific resources. Unlock the first level of this one when you're ready. All right. All right, let's go ahead and unlock it. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. Extraordinary! When you attach the data ground to a squad, this uh, bonus that applies to all characters in the squad. Sorry, right, we got 9% critical damage. Uh, what's the range there? Um, all right, I guess that's kind of the highest range that we can reach. However, this entire squad must satisfy the requirements of a data crown level to gain its benefits. <sighs> the perfection of the dark arts of mobile gaming. CG has a big problem with low star character viability. Uh, this is kind of why it's getting harder for you to do three star character viability. It's already hard enough just from a gear and relic perspective and mod perspective. You're gated from these low star characters. But Marjade, for example, he came out are viable at low stars. It's getting harder and harder because now it seems like for some of these tiers, if your whole squad is not at Relic 3, for example, it's not going to activate the data crime. So if you have that, for example, like me, a low star Mara Jade that you rock in your Relic uh, Palpatine lineup, if Mara Jade's holding you back, you can't activate it. So again, this is a huge slap to players who cannot engage at a higher level of Relics right now. Moving that equal even farther and farther and farther. And without this gear relief that we're waiting for or them to uh, complete with their first stage it's only going to get harder and harder in this game that's the reality i keep reminding people right now inside of galaxy of heroes all right so here we go upgrading data grounds unlocks the range of bonus stats and bonus mechanics tap your look at the possible outcomes before to take a look at all this so I, I i'm guessing that's it uh that's the whole that's the whole tutorial okay so now we have the bonus stats we got a critical damage so this is the mod section this is like the conquest data disc section every three steps here i'm gonna make a more in-depth guide about this when i understand them more again first impressions right now first look just kind of getting an idea of where we are right now all right uh so we got 20 percent tenacity now we ran into a problem where i can't slice anymore because i'm lacking these mark one acumens and for whatever reason i can't just click on it and search for the resource so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hop on over to the brand new store that we have here inside of datacrons 500 all right i can buy some of that the shard shop currency makes me a bit happier about this i'm just glad it's not pack exclusive that's the main thing here uh all right let's go ahead and pick up some of these here i'm gonna pick up some of these guys right here and it looks like you can't like spam refresh you have to wait and uh, again this is the problem i can do this on my main account because i have so much shard shop currency hoarded but shard shop currency is so valuable for upgrading gear that's why i was able to get a lot of my characters at the relic incredibly fast here we're either going to get a dark side or we're going to get a light side alignment bonus here so let's go ahead and upgrade this right here and boom if only they put this much effort in some of their character animations bonus mechanics for light side characters whenever light side allies these are stun an enemy they recover 10 percent health and protect so this is for light side so uh i can see this maybe being helpful for emphasis nest that could be very annoying for emphasis nest jedi knight luke skywalker all right so now we can get uh, a galactic public or resistance okay no you can use re-rolling the focus uh, to focus the data crown but make sure to think ahead i will be able to help demonstrate the reroll process when you wish to attempt it okay let's say for example that i want to start building another set because again the, the idea here is you want to have trying to get as many of these sets within a season as possible so i would hop on over here and you can either buy with crystals of course or we can hop on over and check out the shard shop currency here and let's say i want to buy one of these here and now this is where you can start building multiple data crons to make sure you're getting the bonuses for all the factions available for that particular season and here we go so here we go we're gonna unlock this one and there we go wow so that's got 53 percent healthy which seems kind of nuts but really it's on the lower end of the bonus range that we can get her but still still a huge bonus all right so i had some crystals stored up and i used uh, whatever the ally points i have i kind of regret spending all my ally points a while ago but to be fair all those ally points were converting the shard shop currents i basically want to see with whatever crystal i had how far can we take a data crime i have a feeling that even if i bought everything out of the shipments today it won't be enough to even max out and again i think that's a good thing that they don't just let you go all willy-nilly but the, you know they're gonna eventually open up that nozzle once people are more comfortable with the idea here so all right let's see how far we can take this we're gonna go and upgrade we're gonna get our next bonus stat beyond level three and what do we got whoa hung jeez it's 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 baffling like I, it's like that's it's insane like imagine malik 
or Malgus soon with that much health steal. Like, gosh, these are absolutely insane. Or even like L Lord Vader. Um, again, the possibility of what this could do is going to be pretty crazy. And again, I'm I, I like the idea of seize the bonus. I just don't like that they did it for free. They said it wasn't a good idea because people didn't like him, but now they're going to monetize. That's been my biggest problem with all this. All right, we're going to get another bonus stat that we have here. So this 151 was kind of in the middle of what the health steal can grant us here. Let's go ahead, unlock this right here. Jeez, another 100. And then, all right, we can get to the uh, faction mechanic here, which is either going to be Galactic Public or Resistance. Um, oh, I can target with reroll of level. All right, let me see how that works here. Let's go ahead and get our faction bonus. Um, bonus mechanics at lower level can no longer change, which I see. Okay, so you got to re So let's say, so if I want the Inquisitors, I got to reroll this. <laughs> <laughs> which kind of makes sense right you don't want to get an inquisitor roll when you have a light side roll with all this which is fine uh, uh galactic Republic. come on kenobi kenobi collector Republic for kenobi there we go that's kind of what i'm shooting for whatever galactic Republic allies are granted a buff to another ally that ally gains 10 percent turn meter. so uh, imagine i know kenobi and padme's teams cannot get turn meter but qui-gon jinn imagine qui-gon jinn I'm guessing the foresight from the beginning of the battle will give 10% turn to everyone. That could mess up Bad Batch teams, for example, right there. All right, I got a feeling we're not gonna be able to get to level nine, and I find it improbable that even if I wanted to buy some crystals to take this even further. Yeah, so we're stuck right now. And here's where the thing gets really expensive as we talk about here. This is the problem that I'm gonna have. It's one of those things where, again, I don't mind embracing it through the shipments and like whatever crystals, shard shop currency, ally points that I have just for my normal means of playing the game. But this is where things can get expensive. You want to keep re-rolling to get something else because this is what I got for the Galactic Republic thing. But let's see. Let's say, for example, uh, I want this, Retaliate. This is probably what's going to be golden for Master Kenobi teams. One damage by an attack, deal 20% of the damage reflected back. So this is just like steadfast retribution from Conquest. But the problem is to re-roll that, it's going to cost some of these puppies right here the good news is to re-roll it's not eating into the resources that are used to upgrade these levels so i don't this is this is going to be the tricky part getting the right galactic republic bonus now this could be cool for certain teams uh 501st teams for example captain rex giving buffs but you know they're already getting so much terminus so it might not even matter i kind of want the steadfast retribution so let's just get let's try our first re-roll together let's go for it all right uh select the most mechanic you want the one on the left is always the one you had before you can keep it yeah i want to keep the galactic republic city crown is fully upgraded at any level it can be re-rolled even stat boost okay okay i see so i'm presented with a couple options here ah uh, this is where things were a little unclear for me these were the re-rolled stats i get to pick which one i want if i keep the one i currently have because i don't like the roll i don't get the resources refunded so all right uh just for sake of the argument i want to get keep this one uh, whenever we get a stun, whenever we and whenever an ally uses a special blade during a turn, they stun the target, which is pretty nasty. Uh, yeah, I want that one. Okay, we selected that one. Beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and do one more reroll because I want to see again how this works here. All right. So this is our current one. I don't want the resistance one. One of our galactic public allies inflict the debuff on an enemy during their turn. Uh, this could be nice potentially, but I don't know if that's what I want. So let's just hit the reroll again. And now, okay, so now I can't do it anymore. I'm curious here. What if I want to re-roll this down here? Fully unlock this Datacron to re-roll. Okay, I see. So you got to go all the way to the very top. Really? Oh, jeez. Okay. Here is the up. Here's the graphic right here that we have an updated information made by Kadar the Poet. Thank you again for putting this together. It's just the cost of upgrading it. And dang, 7.5 million of these credits. Actually, I guess to show how this all works in its totality, let's hop over to Grand Arena and show how you actually like hook up these individual things here so we're gonna go to our edit defense and basically like so i have that galactic republic one what i would do here is i would that's a full galactic Republic. so what i would do is i would hit edit and now i can add a datacron down here so i hit that and then i'm gonna drop my galactic republic bonuses down and boom bada bing bada boom we're gonna set that on defense now and there we go now do i have any other galactic republic team but here this is where things get a little interesting you're gonna want to have uh you're gonna want to have the resistance data crown right you want to get that ray up and running here so you know they luckily they give you ways of hitting the uh, uh multiple other ones uh i don't think i have any galactic pop oh here we go they got the cup obviously a mad cup is we, we made cup broken now we can make cup super deadly but here's the problem 
I only can apply one Datacron on that team. And that's where this gets really darn expensive because the Datacron I just had, I gave away to the other team. And you only can have one Datacron you built per team. Think of it like a mod. You have one good 27 speed secondary, you only can put it on one character. So if I want to put something on my other Galactic Republic team, I got to rebuild another Galactic Republic Datacron from scratch. And this is where things get really expensive and the competitiveness is going to be very questionable in Grand Arena now in Territory Wars. It's going to come down to, again, who spent more money? And that's the thing. My Padme team, if I have no Datacron, it's not going to be nearly the same as the enemy's Padme team. And they're going to have a much easier time beating my Padme team where I might have a bigger struggle with it. And that's the biggest kicker. So with those limited resources, if you aren't going to fully embrace this with packs and thousands of dollars, you know, you just got to build a, a couple of Datacrons and hopefully your opponent doesn't have Datacrons on every single team that exists. And they're completely maxed out. I would suspect that'd be very expensive just based off me trying to just see how far I can get on day one here. Jeez. Holy cow. All right. So final initial impressions before we wrap up this video here. Uh, I, I hope I came across as, I came across as open-minded going into today because I know today's a very nerve-wracking day for us as mobile players playing Galaxy of Heroes. First things first, this was not needed for the game. We've, we, we should have seen the writing on the wall when for a year, CG would be complaining why they stopped making raids. Why don't we get like actual fun, new, unique uh, content experiences because it's too expensive. It expires very quickly. We've been wanting to shoot for this golden standard, the dark arts of mobile gaming, of course, where they can create a system that automatically updates itself over time. And that's the content they're shooting for. And that's their version of content they're shooting for, which basically allows them to kind of put the game on full auto, add a couple new characters, let these Datacrons update themselves every couple months, and they can just work on other games like Lord of the Rings Mobile. So firstly, this was not needed, and it sucks. They just... They know what we've been asked for, but they, they're outright ignoring us at this point. And there's no excuse for it. I, I don't think anyone can defend them. Even they haven't kept up their promises. Basic things like a Sith sim raid that they promised. Basic stuff like that. And of course, not even finishing their first gear economy change that they purported they wanted to do. Let's not even get to the second phase of the gear economy change, which we haven't seen yet. It's almost a year later. Gear over content seems to be their policy. And the other problem is simply that if you're someone that's a newer player, mid-ish game player, if you don't have fully relic three teams at the minimum to activate these data crons, you're going to be severely left behind. And how many times have you seen my free to play count? 1.9 now, but there's been times it's been 1.6 versus six plus million. It's already bad. They have a huge relic advantage, Zeta advantage, Omicron advantage, but now they're going to have a data cron advantage. And the thing that I've taken pride in, we've been doing so well, is because I can take a lowish gear faction, low gear characters that supplement some higher geared stuff. And I can crush some high gear stuff that are out there, high relic stuff. They're trying to move that mile, that goalpost farther and farther and farther while they're not giving us anything to help catch up or even give us a reason to make our low star characters more viable. They have some sort of death wish out for lower gear players and lower relic players out there. That sucks beyond belief. If I get the wrong roles, I don't get the meta roll with, the, with these variety, not so much these stats, which yes, they're cool, but these bonuses. If I don't get the right character mechanic, the right faction bonus, the right, besides the faction bonus, the faction itself getting resistance or black public, then getting the targeted, the, the bonus that I want within it, does that mean I just automatically lose Grand Arena? What if I can't keep up with my Territory War Guild? What if my Territory War Guild, they want a certain role and I keep rolling and I can't get the right role for the bonus mechanic? Am I just sorry out of luck? And the thing that's irritating me the most here is that they're going to delete our datacrons every three months so all this time you're building them up they're going away and that's the biggest problem i have especially when we've had seasonal bonuses in the past they were for free but cg were mad that we were interacting with these bonuses for free and they want us to pay for them they want us to upgrade with our resources and create this unnatural divide between players whereas before everyone would get the seasonal bonuses mace windows has got cool bonuses awesome all of you have it it also seems like a lazy way to rework characters. If I want to stay Kyber 1 competitive, do I need to create how many? 4, 8, 11. Do I got to create 11 Datacrons? 11 for defense, 11 for offense. So 22 Datacron sets because I can't just reuse it. I was really hoping 
that if I create one good Galactic Republic set, I can use that Datacron for all my Galactic Republic teams. It's only one Datacron per team. If I want another exact same Datacron with that Galactic Republic stuff for my Padme team, for example, on the north side, I gotta create a brand new one from scratch. I'm still keeping that door open with my open mind. Once we do some conquests and territories, maybe we'll see it's not that hard to get at least a, a decent amount for a top end competitive player. And that's the problem too. If you're not 4 million GP, CG's starting to forget about you guys. And the only upside to all this that I'm seeing is yes, this will keep things refreshing because it's keeping the meta moving. It's gonna make things a bit more unpredictable, whether that's good or bad. Allegedly in squad arena, we'll be able to use our data crons to test it out. There's hopefully to convert it into a sandbox. But again, something we've been asking for CG, some squad arena changes so we can use it to play with our friends or test things out. But again, the fact that these people are lying through their teeth and said that seasonal bonuses were not enjoyed by the community, heavily divisive. People didn't engage with it more. And now all of a sudden you want to monetize it and people are going to enjoy it more now. That's what I have a problem with. We'll see where things take us. Let's see, G, come on. I know you want a way to keep this game on full auto so you can work on Lord of the Rings. Why don't we get the stuff that we've been asking for? Huh? To kind of make this a bit more enjoyable. I don't know. Pretty wild suggestion. In the meantime, let me know what you think. Leave a like, comment down below and all your thoughts. I appreciate you guys watching and hanging out. It's been a lot of fun. But more importantly, until we meet again, always remember that it's great to be in the Empire today.